Hi, Billy here. I'm talking about branching, a powerful feature that will make your automating life a lot easier, but you want to avoid some common mistakes. Enter branching do's and don'ts, a best practices guide so you can avoid those common mistakes and utilize this powerful automation feature properly. With branching, if you find yourself with a criteria that is an if-based criteria that is known at the time of the branch step, that's probably gonna be a good opportunity to use automation branching. If the criteria that you wanna branch off is a when-based criteria, that should be a red flag to don't use branching and to use separate automations instead. Examples are gonna be probably the easiest way to kind of differentiate between the do and don't here. So let's get into some examples of how you can use branching where it comes in quite handy. So here's three examples I see a lot. If a placement is direct hire or contract. So you know that information at the time the placement's made. So you can have that be a branch, have it go down different cadences and you're all set there. If a survey is completed is another good way that you can branch and then branch depending upon what the survey response is. So that can be a really good example there. You can kind of tidy things up. You don't need multiple automations for it because as soon as a survey is completed, that's when it enters the automation and then the branch occurs. And then the last example here is if candidate country is X or Y. So this is really helpful for those clients that want to do things, maybe different uh, languages and depending upon the location of the, of the candidate or if they have different brands that are operating in the same database, you can utilize whatever criteria you use for your segmentation, match it for your branching. You can keep that all into one area and all your metrics in the same area as well. Getting into some don't examples. So when someone opens or doesn't open an email, so again, that when based trigger, you wanna avoid using branching for and instead utilize separate automations for when something happens. If it doesn't happen, you can usually keep it in the same automation. Uh, when someone clicks a call to action. So again, same kind of concept here, that should be a separate automation so that you can trigger it as soon as that activity occurs and you don't have to worry about the branch step being missed or going down the wrong branch path. So, and then lastly here, with date-based automations, you need to be very careful about your branching and you need to ensure that all the things that are going through that particular step in the date-based automation uh, match and, and it's not gonna cause problems. You don't have outliers that could miss that step and then miss everything possible in the branching that follows. Tutorial here for you that walks through some of these do's and don'ts examples, specifically inside of Herefish. It's gonna be a little bit lengthier than usual, but it's gonna include timestamps. So feel free to jump around to specific examples, but hopefully this will save you a lot of headache and time. If you can utilize branching correctly, avoid the common mistakes, it's gonna really help you long-term. Going to jump in and show some common uses of branching and also common mistakes hopefully you can avoid after watching this tutorial. So the first we're gonna go through, this is a great example of branching. This is when, you know, depending upon the employment type of a placement, you could have it go down different paths. So this is helpful if you wanna keep all of your onboarding or touch points in one place. You, know, you, you don't wanna have separate automations. You want all the metrics to be in one area. So you can do it, you could do it this way. So, you know, for example, we could split this, you know, our contract or temporary placements could have a very different cadence than our direct hire. You know, so the contract, you might you know, send a reminder, make sure they show up on their start date. You know, how was your first day? You going back tomorrow, that kind of thing. You know, with direct hires, you could maybe follow up after a week, have the first week go, you know, it's probably training intensive, things of that nature. So again, this is a, a good example of branching because it's something that you know when the placement is put into place, if it's a contract or a direct hire placement. And one thing you have to be a little bit careful of is the wait step. We'll talk about that uh, in more detail in some of the, the automation branching things to avoid, but just to, just to point that out here. 
The second example is, you know, when you want to branch around something that's kind of already happened. So this would be a, a survey, you know, completion. So the trigger into the automation is someone completing the survey. Now, there's actually two different criteria here. And just a, it's an important point to make. Submitted survey would mean that someone has completed the survey or answered all the required questions. Taken survey can mean someone's just answered one question. So if you want to utilize this, you'd want to utilize the submitted survey option just so that you give it some time. And you could get rid of this wait step if you want to kind of trigger this immediately. But the idea is someone completes the survey, they enter the automation, and then you can have different branches, right, for depending upon the score that they provided you in that MPS survey. So you know, if it's nine or 10, they go down the promoter branch. If it's uh, you know eight or seven, they go down the neutral branch. And then if it's six or less, they go down the detractor branch. So again, a great a great way to kind of you know combine your your automations so they don't have a ton of them. This would be a really good example, another good example for branching. Another common example that I've I've seen is for those companies that either want to do multilingual automations or campaigns, or they have different brands, right, in, inside their database, so it's segmented out. Now you could create separate automations for all those things and keep them in different areas. But again, that would create a, a lot of work, but you can just also create branches inside of your automations, right? In this example, we can have an English branch or a French branch, and you can segment that out based off of the address of the candidate or what department you know, their, their, um, their owner belongs to, things of that nature. So any, any of the list criteria that you use to segment, those specific segments inside your database can be copied with the branching, make that happen. So if you'll notice kind of the, the branching examples here are all kind of if-based branching that you know at the time of the branch step. So that's where branching really shines, helps you clean things up and get you a little bit more organized. Now to get into some of the ways you don't want to use branching or in common mistakes that I see. So the first one I'm going to show here, I see a lot, and unfortunately, uh, it's not good when it happens. So this is, would be an example. Say you send a survey, and then let's just say we're sending an MPS survey, and then you want to branch depending upon if someone you know, gave you a certain score. Now, the one thing to understand here is there's no time in between the survey step and the branch step being evaluated. So what's going to happen in reality is this survey is going to send and then almost instantaneously this branch step is going to get evaluated. So everything is going to go down the default branch because someone cannot take the survey literally instantaneously from when it gets sent. So in order for this to even work whatsoever, you need to have a wait step in between the survey and the branch just to give it a period of time in order for that to trigger. So say you want to you know, give it three days and then, then go about it. But as we'll see later, that's still not really ideal. But always if, if you're, so this would be an, a when, you know, when someone answers a certain way, which is again, that kind of a red flag for you should probably create a separate automation instead of doing branching. So that is mistake number one. Mistake number two I want to show you, and this I gave a little preview from the, how you can do this. This is where you need to be very careful with date-based automations. So we have a branch step here 14 days before a placement start date. And then we're doing different things depending on what placement type it is. Now the tricky part here is this branch step is only going to go through 14 days before the start date. What that means is if you have a contract placement that gets put into the system seven days before the placement start date, it would not enter this branch step because it can't 14 days before it would be impossible in that example. And nothing in the branch would either trigger or happen. So you have to be very careful in date-based automations with branching to ensure that your entire segment that's going through the automation is gonna go through that branch step. So 
this is where you need to know kind of your process, the outliers, you know, those types of things. And if you know you have outliers that could be all across the board, and you know it, you might want to think about separate automations in that scenario, just to make sure that you're hitting it. Because again, if the branch step is not possible to be entered, then nothing in the branch would be entered. So the example of seven days before the start date is when the placement gets created. That would never enter into this automation in any way, which is a problem if you're expecting it to. The third example is, is really kind of a trade-off more than necessarily a mistake. But this would be that example where you send a survey and then five days later, you have a period of time in between. So you did, you took the advice there and then you're branching depending upon responses. Now, the trade-off here is that regardless of when the person answers within the five day period, five days later is when the branch step happens. So if this survey gets sent and the person answers 20 minutes after they receive it, it's still gonna be five days later for when this triggers. But if you did a separate automation, that would trigger you know, in minutes after the response came back in. So if you wanna immediately follow up on an action, that's gonna be better done in a separate automation. And then the other component of this is if someone answers this survey seven days after you send it to them, they would be in the default branch, right? Because after five days, this is gonna get evaluated. They haven't answered it, so they go down the default branch. So that's the other thing you have to kind of, your trade off you have to be aware of is in this scenario where you're branching uh, based off a of response, if the response isn't provided in that period of time in the wait step, it's not gonna flow down the branch of the response. So again, another good idea for making it separate automations in that case. And then lastly, this isn't necessarily a mistake. This is just a way to kind of simplify your life. Uh, so I've, I've heard this one before where, you know, say you're, you're sending an email in your onboarding campaign and then specific clients of yours require different information to be included in the email. So that might strike you as an opportunity to utilize branching or to utilize the separate automations. You could do that, but it's gonna require a lot of work because you're gonna need to copy and paste and recreate the entire cadence each time that needs to get done. This is an example where smart tokens can save you a lot of time and effort. So just gonna briefly show you kind of how this, so we'll just pretend in this scenario that we have a few different companies that need different requirements in their onboarding. They need different information shared to candidates. We don't wanna create separate automations or separate branches for each one of those clients. We wanna do it a simpler way. So we're gonna use smart tokens. So those are accessible in the library area. Create an example one here. So we're doing as a placement-based smart token naming it client company info needed. And then we're just creating a list. So if the company of the placement is company Y, then this is what's gonna go for the smart token merge tag in the message. If it's company X, then this was gonna go. If it's company Z, then this, this is gonna go. And you can create as many of these as you want. And then if something doesn't match any of these smart token criteria, it's gonna be this default message at the bottom. So that's how smart tokens work. Now, the beauty of this is you can insert this dynamic variable inside of the message, and then depending upon which list the individual matches, the correct content will be displayed. So if we go back to the automation, just show you how this would be done, and we click inside of here and go inside the email, you can find your smart tokens in the merge tag area, when you're, when you're putting in this information. So here that merge tag is, and then that will populate with the information from the smart token that we just built in the library. So if someone gets placed from company Y, at company Y, it's gonna be different information here than if it's company Z. Um, so that's how you could do that without branching, without separate automations, but still have the content be different depending upon which company someone's placed at. And that can save you a lot of time in the grand scheme of things. Thank you for watching. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new videos. Leave a like or a comment and be sure to check out these other videos over here.
Until next time, happy automating.